Hello, my name is Felix Jones and welcome to a new episode of Felix's Philosophy. Today I want to talk to you guys about uh, something I think we can all talk about, which is freedom. Uh, I think the one universal quality that we all agree that we actually want is freedom of choice, not to feel like we're forced into things, not to feel like we're um, dependent on other people. I want to talk about how that extends into freedom of thought and freedom of communication. So when I was a teenager, uh, most of the my, my favourite characters in fiction and in anything else that I read or watched were people who were portrayed as being completely uninhibited. I loved the idea of any characters who were capable of being completely out of control, who were capable of doing what they wanted, saying what they wanted, being who they wanted all of the time. And that, and I think that is a manifestation of the same reason that I want to talk about freedom now and why it's something that I think about so much now. Uh, the other reason why I wanted to talk about this subject is I also just got done reading uh, this, which is a book on Diogenes, uh, the original cynic. Diogenes was a man who lived on the street who had nothing and stated that he was free because he owned himself and nothing else. And I think there was the problem with that idea is that what he did is he laid on an example for people of this way that one could live a life that was not dependent on anything that was, that did belong entirely to oneself but he didn't take it to the actual all the way he didn't live off of the land he wasn't at one with nature he lived in the city and he and he took money from um, people and so he was actually still partaking in that community he was still dependent on people around him for money for being able to eat the real ideal would be a world in which you were capable of living off of the land and not being attached to people whatsoever and that would be truly uninhibited. The truly uninhibited person would be somebody who wasn't dependent on people around them, is what I'm trying to say. Of course, that idea is now basically impossible in the modern society because there is no land in the world that isn't owned by somebody, so it's impossible for one to actually go and be free and uninhibited and, and separated from society in a way that isn't, in a sense, dependent on being able to own a piece of land, dependent on other people cooperating with the idea. There is no freedom in that regard. The mind is the one place in which we can truly be free. And here is the part of the story where I tell you the really tragic thing that really compelled me to write about this was the fact that I got shouted at by some teenagers in the park. I was out uh, with one of my partners and I was giving her a kiss goodbye. And um, they, one of these teenagers, they started, uh, you know, shouting, jeering at us. And like, it wasn't really horrible things. It was nothing too awfully offensive, but it was designed to rile us up. It was designed to get us annoyed. And it just got me thinking about the subject because I have no problem with people thinking negative things about me. They can think whatever they like, where they're free inside their own heads. They can think that I'm beneath them. They can think that I'm ridiculous. They can think whatever they like, it doesn't matter because it's just what they're thinking. And that is that is a true freedom that they have. They have the liberal capacity, even though I wouldn't consider it the most healthy thing to do, to feel the need to put somebody below you in order to feel better about yourself, potentially. Um, I think the but there's still the point is it's a freedom they ha they can do that as much as they want but then the thing is as soon as they they didn't just keep it in their heads they needed to communicate it to me to us in order to make it a valid thought in order to put it to use and I think the second that you take an idea that's inside your head and you feel compelled to actually give it to somebody else it no longer belongs to you it's no longer free that has this necessary quality that it has to be heard by somebody else that has to be used to negative really impact somebody else's life in order for it to be of any use. But I don't think on inspection that you can call any of this behaviour that involves having to connect with other people and, and have negative impacts upon their lives truly free. In the same way that characters like Tyler Durden and Hunter S. Thompson were portrayed as going around having an impact on people, like shocking people, they aren't free because they are stuck in this communal activity where they have to impact other people's lives. You see like the crazy drunk on the streets who has no problem freely and unconsentingly yelling his opinion in people's ears and impacting their lives. You have these te you have builders and teenagers who shout at people because the negative thoughts that they have in their heads aren't enough just existing inside their own heads. Much like Diogenes in these examples, instead of actually being free, what these people are doing is they're partaking in a communal activity that still is dependent on a recipient to, to take on board what's being said, to hear what's being said, to be impacted by what's being said. Considering that freedom is such a universally compelling drive, an idea that we all strive for, 
why is it that we are so desperate to do it that we're com willing to completely forget the ways in which we're actually enslaving ourselves, we're, ways that we're actually making ourselves dependent on those around us. We don't live in a world where you can actually be completely independent because we're communal beings. We require the resources of other people around us and we can't get those resources completely independently without having money to buy land, without having someone to grow crops for us if we can't do it ourselves, if we don't have land. And so long as you're taking part in this thing, you can't be completely uninhibited. I actually had a friend not too long ago who was particularly passionate about his freedom of speech being stifled when it came to communicating with people because he wanted to be able to use terms like actress or he didn't worry about using terms like cis or trans or anything along those lines and he considered anybody trying to push him to do so to be a stifling of his freedom of speech and I think the real miscommunication there is that there's a difference between a stifled freedom of speech and being considerate of your audience. And indeed it is obvious that we live in a culture where people can be have their entire opinion undermined by the fact that they don't know one piece of information about how best to communicate their ideas. They can be told to go and educate themselves and that means that you can write off their entire opinion. I don't think that's right. However, I think if you have an idea that it, is dependent on it being offensive in order for it to be communicated, then there is something wrong with that idea. There's, I mean, obviously the ideas can be offensive because they're troubling to hear, but they're, if they're necessary, but if they're not, then they're probably unnecessary and they might actually be hateful ideas. The most ridiculous thing is that this double standard of believing that one is free whilst having your ideas dependent on being communicated and forcefully communicated to the people around you, particularly when in a negative context, as being held by the people who are probably most concerned with knowing that what they're doing is an expression of their freedom. So long as you're dependent on a community, there is no real freedom. There is a world in which we are communal beings and where our actions will impact the people around us. And though there's a lot to be said for trying to strive for an actual real freedom, there's still the case where we will always be surrounded by other people and therefore we will always be impressing our personal freedom upon their personal freedom. It means that we have to consider ourselves as equally valuable to everybody else. And most of all, I can't help but feel like if we truly are incapable of being completely independent, if we have to depend on other people in order for our ideas to be heard and to have meaning, and if that's the only way that you can possibly be happy, I think the best thing to do would be to be considerate of the people that you're dependent upon. Well, I think that's basically me for the day, and uh, I hope that I'm going to see you all again next week. Uh, this was a bit more of a looser, improvised piece. Don't know how well it's going to turn out. I think next week I'm going to do something that's a little bit more solid and written down uh, based on some of my old writings like I did last week. Thank you very much for watching, and yeah, see you again. My name's Felix Jones. Oh, um, and maybe like and subscribe if you feel like it maybe anyway yeah i'm not gonna step on your personal freedom um see you next week